I'm Charlie Johnson with Maverick Boat Group. And today on Wide Path Fire, I'm going to talk to you about our wiring harnesses. As you can see here, we're standing next to a Pathfinder 23 HPS. Beautiful looking boat and looks absolutely count. A lot of people make their decision strictly on how a boat looks that's on the lot. In my hand here is a wiring harness. It doesn't look as pretty as glamour or as glamorous as the boat does, but I'll tell you, especially long term, this is more important than even the cosmetics on your boat. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through our whole process from how we design our harnesses to how we build them, how we install them, and then take you through and show you a finished harness and boat and show you exactly why harnesses are so important. The creation of all of our wiring harnesses starts here in the engineering department where we draft each and every wire harness in every boat here on our computer assisted drafting programs also known as CAD. It is here that we analyze every wire to make sure that it reaches the proper length, the proper gauge, and the proper parts associated with the wire. Through the process, we analyze it through a 10 to 3% voltage drop so that it meets the standards that of the Coast Guard and that of the American Boat and Yacht Council. Once our engineering team comes up with a schematic for each one of the harnesses, they get printed out and brought out here to the production floor. This is our wire harness building area. Use the, the schematics, they roll them out on the, this big table here, use these pegs right here to route the wires. The wire is routed exactly how it'll fall in the boat. There's no extra sags, there's no extra wire or anything like that. These labels here tell these guys exactly what wire goes where. It's all copper tinned wire. They use Deutsch connectors on all the harnesses, the very best watertight connectors in the business. Um, you can see here also as well, this is fully conduit. These harnesses are made particular to the order, not just to the model itself. So if you have a particular order that has an added feature in it, that wire gets strung right into this harness. So they're very custom to the, each ind individual boat. As you can see here, even speaker wires get brought in here. Every wire at either end is, is labeled so that when they're in the boat, when it's coming out of that conduit, you can see exactly what that wire goes to and where. So very, very easy to maintain. Now we've moved out to an open hull of a 26 Pathfinder. This is right before the, this is right before the deck goes on, okay? There are a lot of things to note here. First off, this is a place where a lot of companies take a lot of liberties, mainly because once the cap goes on the boat, you can't see any of this anymore. That's not true at Pathfinder, but since we're focused on wiring harnesses on this video, I wanna talk about our wiring harness. We talked about how we laid it out. You can see now it's installed in the boat. First off, note how everything is tied up out of the bilge. Also note, there are no sags in, in here. That's because when we designed the wiring harness, we designed it specific to this model. It's not a wiring harness that's shared across the other models. It's not extra long, has a bunch of sag in it, loops we have to take care of, all right? It fits this boat exactly. Everything is labeled like we talked about. This is a, the harness that'll be attached into the deck. All these going into this Deutsch connector, the very best connectors in the business, watertight. Everything is labeled so you know exactly what is what. As you move forward here, you can see everything is tied up, moves forward. It's in chase tubes or in conduit. So it's the wires protected. There's no chafing, anything like that. So we moved forward a little bit and to the other end of the harness here. This is the portion of the harness that attaches into the console and the switch panel. Everything's plug and play. As you can see again, all, all uh, wires are labeled here. Here we have the grounding block that'll go and tie into the console. All this stuff is very accessible. I'll show you guys that in a minute. Here we have the bonding wire that grounds the tank to the whole system so there are no detrimental effects from static electricity. Across here, trolling motor wires. That's standard on every single Pathfinder. As you can see, the run up through a chase tube all the way forward to where the trolling motor would be. In here, you have a, a pull cord. That's if you want to add anything after the fact. Every harness has a pool cord in it. That's just for ease of maintenance down the line. So now we're up in a Pathfinder, and I want to walk through here and show you all the wiring harnesses in their fully rigged configuration, and just really how easily accessible they are and how easy it is to under, understand exactly what wires you have going where. We'll pull this front portion off right here and look down into the console. Now we are looking inside of the console at the back of the helm and switch panel. There are a number of things to note here. First, notice how easy all this is to access and reach. This picture was taken looking through the console door on the front of the console. 
There's no having to get your, on your back or working upside down to maintain your home connections and panel. Also notice how clean and well organized everything is. Not only does it look nice, but this makes it easy to work on. Oftentimes in this area the wires look like a giant bird's nest and it's very difficult to figure out what goes where. You can see how the wires are grouped together in conduit and tied up so that there is no sagging or pulling where the wires are secured to their component. If left to just hang the weight of the wire and the bouncing while underway will pull the wires away from their connections. Also notice the limited number of wire connectors. This is because the wires are measured to length for this boat. We are not having to extend wires after the fact to make them reach. Where we have to use connectors to tie into vendored parts, we use heat shrink connectors that are heated and then clamped twice on both ends using a special clamping tool that doesn't compromise the watertight seal of the connector or damage the wires. After the connector is heated and clamped, it undergoes a pull test to ensure the wires are solidly connected. All this translates to your electrical system and components working as they should for the long term. And if you ever do need to work on, do any work on your wiring, it's easy to access and well organized so you can get back out on the water quickly. If you're a boater or have friends or bo uh, that are boaters, I would guarantee you that they've talked to you or that you've experienced yourself electrical issues with boats. It's really surprising then to this even to this day that many manufacturers really don't give the attention to detail that they need to in their wiring harnesses. They're outsourced, they're harnesses that are used for multiple boat models, sized to one model and used in another model, extra slack, extra wires in there. I hope you've learned today by going through this video with us that that's not the case at all at Pathfinder. We take extreme measures to make sure our harnesses are exactly right, exactly built for every single boat. They're engineered from the start for that model. They're laid out to go into specific locations. There's no sagging, no pulling, no extra wires that you don't need. Everything is clearly labeled. It's these kind of things that really make a difference in the long runs that two, three, four years from now, even longer than that, you aren't experiencing issues with dead batteries or live wells going down or things that can ruin your day. It's this kind of stuff that's extremely important and that really separates Pathfinder from the other guys. Thank you for joining me today on Why Pathfinder.